Hello everyone. Today we're going to go and check out some virtual machines again and we're going to look at the overview of virtual machines. We will see all of the components that make up virtual machines in the Azure platform and we'll also take a look at the sizes of those virtual machines, i.e. the specifications of those virtual machines, how fast we can go and the different functionalities that they have. We will also look at the costs of those virtual machines and we will check out some of the default base images that we can actually use. So this is a quick introduction for how to deploy your first virtual machine into the Azure platform and the things you need to know to do that. So let's get straight into it. So when you're deploying Azure Virtual Machines, the first thing you have to understand is that Azure Virtual Machines actually come with multiple different components. You don't just see one VM. What you'll also be able to see with the virtual machine is you'll also be able to see the disk for the virtual machine itself. This is a virtual hard drive. This is going to be managed by Microsoft by default. You'll also see a few other components down here. The virtual machine will also have a virtual network card. So by default, it has to have a VNIC, it can't exist without being attached to one, and this is a separate object inside Azure. That VNIC also needs to be attached to a VNet. So when you deploy virtual machines into Azure, they need to be connected to a virtual network. And more to the point, inside a virtual network, there needs to actually be an active subnet inside the virtual network for it to connect to. So this VNIC needs to be connected to that subnet itself. It won't deploy without a VNet. The other thing that you're going to get with a virtual machine deployment or a basic virtual machine deployment is something called an NSG. This is a network security group. What an NSG does is it has a number of different rules for networking. Essentially, you can think of it a little bit like a small firewall and all it's actually doing is blocking ports. So you could say, for example, port 80, port 443, port 3389. So if you don't know, these are the ports for uh, HTTP. HTTPS if we're running a web server and 3389 is RDP or remote desktop protocol what we use to connect to the VM. This network security group can actually attach to the virtual network card of the VM and what it does it essentially puts like a fence around that virtual machine and only these appropriate ports are actually allowed to traverse that fence. The virtual machine has no knowledge of this whatsoever. Now there is one more thing to note um, to make connection to this virtual machine easy, just for demonstration purposes, what we also have attached to this VNIC is also a public IP address, and this is actually a public IP address that is going out to the internet. And because we open the port here inside the network security group, what we can actually do is we can remote connect to that via RDP, if this is running Windows, via that public IP address. So let's get straight on with actually creating an Azure Virtual Machine and see what that looks like in the portal to deploy a simple Windows deployment. So over here in the Azure portal, I can start by creating a resource group. And if I go to create here, I'm going to create a brand new resource group called VM Demo. Now I can choose Virtual Machines. And in here, I can create a new Azure Virtual Machine. I can choose that resource group that I just created, VM Demo, and I can call this virtual machine VM Demo. This has to be unique in your Azure subscription, but it does not have to be unique across the entire world. I'm going to deploy this into the East US region, and I'm going to deploy this down here with this specific image. Now, there are a number of base images that you can actually use within Azure here. Uh, you'll see that I'm, for example, using the Windows Server 2022 Data Center Edition, but these ones down here are the base images that you've got to use. Things like Ubuntu and SUSE and Oracle, Linux, Red Hat, and of course, Windows Server, Windows 11, and Windows 10 professionals. If you go to see all images down here, what you actually get is a link out to something called the Marketplace, of which there are many images in here, 11,000 at the time of recording. But I don't want to go and look at all of this. I just want to use a basic image down here. So going back to create, I'm going to leave this on Windows Server 2022 Data Center Edition, and we're going to leave this on 64-bit. Now looking at the sizes down here, there are a number of different sizes that we could actually choose. You cannot actually specify these sizes yourself. So you can't say, for example, I want exactly this amount of cores and exactly this amount of RAM. That's not a thing in Azure. You have to actually choose a specific image. And there are a number of images available to us here. If we go into all sizes, you will actually find down here a few hundred different types of images. Now, some of these images are going to be for memory optimization, 
optimization. Some of these are going to be CPU optimized. And some of these, like the N series of images, actually have GPUs attached to them as well um, for high performance compute situations. I just want a very basic image down here. Uh, and I'm going to go and check out something like a four core, 14 gigs worth around the standard DS3 V2 image. Now that name might seem a little confusing, but if we look here at the documentation, we can see there is a little diagram. So we've got a family, a subfamily, a feature set, um, and a version of the image itself. And you can see down here through these sizes, there's everything from the general purpose sizes, A, B, D, and D, C family, all the way down to things like compute optimized for the F and FX families. And even if you want, there are FPGA accelerated machines for very specific workloads. So my workload here is just generic. It's going to be four cores, 14 gigs worth of RAM. Now I'm going to set a username and password here. This username and password is actually going to be a local admin password for this virtual machine. So that's what I'm going to use to log into it later. I'm going to make sure that I've got RDP selected open here so I can connect to this virtual machine running Windows. This is actually the network security group settings. Now, I don't really have to mess about with many more of the settings down here. I've got a default operating system disk size of 127 gig. That's perfectly fine. And the networking section, because the virtual machine needs to connect to a VNet, if a virtual network does not exist for that VNet, what it will do is it will actually create one for you here called VM demo dash VNet or the name of your virtual machine dash VNet. So you don't have to think about that. If you're not too sure about the networking at the moment and you just want to deploy one virtual machine, don't worry about this too much, it will deploy something that is going to work with your virtual machine. Also note down here, it's actually going to deploy a public IP address called vmdemo-ip for me. And that's going to be a dynamic public IP address that I can use to connect. I'm just going to next, next, next through the managing for the management and the monitoring section. I'm going to turn off boot diagnostics and I'm going to go into advanced tags and review. And we're just going to create that virtual machine. Now, the reason I've turned off boot diagnostics, if you're wondering why that is one of the things I changed, is because it's something I don't need. Now, by default on these virtual machines, you will not be able to see them from boot time. So if it, if it does blue screen on you, you will not be able to see the blue screen error. Now, what boot diagnostics allows you to actually do is actually take um, a screenshot of that virtual machine during its boot time if you get a blue screen error and hopefully allowing you to kind of troubleshoot that as well. And it saves that to an Azure storage account. It's not something I need for this demo, so I left it turned off for the moment. So all we have to do now is wait for this virtual machine to actually deploy. It doesn't take too long. If you choose one of the smaller VMs, say four, eight, 16 cores, something along those lines, it only takes a few seconds to actually deploy this. But if you deploy one of the larger virtual machines or a more custom virtual machine, for example, those FPGA machines or the larger N series machines with GPUs attached to them. This could take a few minutes to actually deploy. So our deployment is now complete. So let's go back to resource groups and let's go and find the resource group that I created earlier, which was called VM demo and open that up. And what you can see in here is there's not just the virtual machine itself, but there's also the additional components of that virtual machine. There's the public IP address. There's the network security group. There's the net virtual network. There's the NIC and there's the disk. Wonderful. So if I go to this virtual machine demo now, um, you'll actually be able to see that this is running and it has a public IP address associated with it. If I want to connect to this, I can click connect, click connect again, and I can download an RDP file for this connection. Let's go and keep that, open that file. And now we're going to click connect on this and pop in our password. This is what we set during the deployment of the virtual machine and we connect directly to that VM. And now we're actually inside that virtual machine session onto our Windows Server 2022 box that we created within Azure as a virtual machine. And I hope you enjoyed this demo to quickly deploy an Azure virtual machine and kind of get started to running them. Join me next time for more tutorials on Azure. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll join me next time. Goodbye.